Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Come Lord. On, give him another hand clap of praise, would you? He's worthy this morning. We're excited to have you in the house of the Lord. If you're a guest here today, you are in fact that. You're a guest, and we are honored to have you with us. Uh, I want us to take just a minute while they continue to play. Uh, Tammy just came to the altar, and uh, she's having some uh, medical issues. She's having some issues with her vision. And uh, to be quite honest with you, my God is a healer of vision, isn't he? And so we're going to believe that though she may have some apprehension, uh, we're just believing that, that God is not so far away that he can't heal her today. And so we're going to pray over this prayer cloth. We just prayed for her, but sometimes we need that point of contact. And so for one of yours, one of our family, can we just come in agreement and pray over this prayer cloth that God is going to begin to heal her as she goes if he hasn't already healed her by the time she got to her seat? And we just believe that today. Heaven is not too far. Amen. Heaven is not too far for him to reach down his healing hand. And so let's just pray for Tammy. God, we just pray for Tammy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, as a point of contact, Lord, this prayer cloth. Or we believe and we know that you're our healer today. God, we give you glory in this house, God. We send this prayer call, Lord, simply as a point of contact. Lord, a reminder of the power that you have, the stripes that you took, Lord, at the whipping post. God, we give you praise today that by your stripes she is healed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. God, God is awesome, isn't he? Come on, give him one more hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. Let me welcome everyone, our guests especially today. It's uh, it's just an honor to have you take your time and give us an hour of your day today. Our online family, thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited with our online church. If you were here last week, you know that uh, Pastor Rachel is now our online pastor making contacts. And so if you online see uh, Rachel pop up, Rachel Blankenship, then, you know, it's not a stalker or anything. We just want to connect with you uh, and make sure you know that we love you and we appreciate you, whatever state you're in. And I mean that geographically. Uh, but we love you no matter what state you're in any other way. But we're excited to be in the house of the Lord today. Uh, you should have seen a packet on your, on your chair uh, some invitations. Did you see those invitations on the back of that invitation? There is a, uh, a prayer list as well. Now, for those of you that's online this morning, we're going to sort of encourage you to do the same uh, that our people are doing here at the house. But we're just excited that this season is coming up. We're walking into a what we would call a resurrection season, aren't we? Uh, the sun is out. I've seen flowers blossoming, uh, blooming. I've seen trees budding. And it's just a time of new birth. It is a time of new beginnings. And I love that. Sometimes during this season, God will begin to work on your heart and your mind and maybe move you from different places. I've seen jobs become different. I've seen ministries become different uh, in this season. Once we just open our heart and say, you know what, I'm ready to be alive again. I'm ready to move again for the glory of God. And so if that's you, please just listen closely today because I believe God has a word for you. How many of you think that I, I will never be able to work my way to heaven, right? Never be able to work my way to heaven. I'll never be able to repay God for everything he's done for me. I'll never be able to do that. But while I'm waiting on, on Christ's return, I want to be doing everything I can do to grow the kingdom of God. And so that's why you have those in your seat right now. These invitations are yours. This prayer list is yours. But I just want you to be mindful of it as we walk through this message today. Such a great season. We're only three weeks away from Easter. Three weeks. How many of you think that we could double the size of our church in three weeks? Okay, the, I think you could. I think we could. And uh, for those uh, skeptics, I'm just going to be honest with you. I think that sometimes we sort of lay down some things and we're content with, uh, uh, with, with our same 10 people, our same five people, our same four people. We, we kind of get a mindset of four and no more, don't we? Uh, I had a friend of mine say, man, we, when we done a work day at church, it was STP, and same 10 people, right? And God has blessed us when we do a work day. I don't even have to tell you there's biscuits, and we'll have 60 or 65 people typically uh, show up for a work day. And it's why is that? Because we want to advance the kingdom of heaven, whatever that looks like. And whatever that requires, it may require dragging brush. It may require uh, painting. It may require who knows what, cleaning windows. 
but we're just excited to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. And I want to encourage you today that if you're willing to be a laborer for the kingdom of heaven, we, we want to do more than introduce the gospel of Christ and, and see you saved. We want that. That is huge. But we want to take you a step further. We want to take you and teach you how to live, right, through the word of God. We, uh, we uh, teach the, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We give an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can draw you and lead you into a place of salvation, a place of repentance. Right after that, we don't want you to fall by the wayside and say, I'm saved, that's all I need. We want you to get in the word, get in the word with us and allow God to train us, grow us, move us to become fully devoted followers of Christ. And then after that, we just want to today, will start this particular series for the next three weeks that we want to equip you out of this building, uh, even online with the message that I'm going to bring, equip you to become uh, uh, an evangelist even, uh, but I'm not a preacher. Yeah, you don't have to be. I'm not a teacher. You don't have to be. I'm not a very good at public speaking. Well, you don't have to be. We just want to put some simple tools in your hand today to say, you know what? We, how can we double the size of this church? Everybody bring a person, Right? Right? I heard pastor tell me, he said, I said, I'm going to pray that your church doubles in a year. Well, my church will never double in a year. I said, well, you're right. What? thought you said my church would double in a year. I said, well, I don't have to believe it. You did. If you're convinced it won't. So I said, do you know how your church will double? I don't. I don't know how in the world we'll get there. Every person bring a person. That's it. Well, that won't double my church. I didn't talk to him about math. <laughs> So we left our conversation, and I'm going to be shocked if he ever doubles his church, right? Because he's not going to teach them what we're going to teach you today, that we don't have to be preachers, teachers. We don't have to be evangelists, but God's going to make us that. The title of my message is uh, The Labors Are Few. The labors are few? Nope. What? The labors are what? Well, hey, the labors are you, right? We can talk about the labors being few, and that kind of gives us an excuse or a reason to sit on our tail doesn't it? The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Lord, there's few laborers. God, there's few. La but here's the thing. We got 150 laborers in here today. How awesome is that? And so we're going to flip it around for you this morning. Last week, our message was, uh, there's no shortage in heaven. If you were here, man, you needed that. If you were here, that you got blessed. If you were here, we probably and quite possibly heard a praise report this week. So let's get on with the, the laborers are you. I think it's important that you understand that you have a place in the kingdom of heaven. And not just a place in the kingdom of heaven, but you have a role to play in the kingdom of heaven. You have a responsibility. Once you receive Christ as your Savior, that is not it. That is not the end. That seven-word prayer, that 11-word prayer right up here at the front of the church is not it. That 11-word prayer in, on your couch, that seven-word prayer at your workplace, that uh, prayer that you prayed for of repentance uh, uh, on the side of the road in your car, that's not the end of what God wants to do through you and in you. And so I love that when people come to the house of God, they say, you know what, Pastor, I just want to get busy. I, I want to get moving. I want to do something for the glory of God. And maybe you've not told me that individually, but collectively, I'm just going to believe it today by faith that you're going to grab this message. And so remember these cards. Don't forget these five cards, this prayer list. I want you to keep those in mind as we go. In Luke chapter 10, and so I'm going to look at nine verses of the scripture right here. It says, after these things, the Lord appointed a 70 others also. And so he's beginning to grow his following, right? He's beginning to grow his discipleship pool. And so that's why you're here this morning. We're going to grow our discipleship pool. We're going to grow our evangelistic pool this morning because God is going to speak to you. He is going to move in you. And I promise you, just like when Jesus was on the shore, he said, come with me and I'll make you fishers of men. That is what God has called every single person that has asked him into their heart. He has called us to be fishers of men, not to sit with our blinds rolled shut, not to sit around with our fuzzy slippers on and say, woe is me. God didn't call me to do anything. He called you to be fishers of men. He said, follow me and I'll make you something that you've never been before. Sure, we can catch fish, right? If we're, you know, what would y'all say about that? If we're what? Lucky, right? Can I tell you in evangelism, there's no luck. <laughs> there's just not. You might get lucky and catch some catfish, maybe a couple bass. You might get lucky and catch some trout. But here's the thing. You won't have any luck winning souls. It has to be something of your heart. It has to be a call of God's heart. It has to be a move of God's heart. And so the Lord right here is appointing 70 others also. And he sent them out two by two, by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. 
What about that? Where you go, he's about to go. You see, I can stop right there because this just excites me. That where you go, he's about to go. How do I know? Because I'm taking him. How do I know? Because when I get there, I'm going to show them something they've never seen. I'm going to love them like they've never been loved. I'm going to give them help like they've never been helped. I'm going to speak hope like they've never heard hope. And guess who's going to show up in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to grab that next round. And so verse number two. And then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. How is that? Would that, just be a, would that just be say, hey, let's make a list of problems we have. That's where we'd be in a, a board meeting maybe. Let's list a few issues we have. Okay, the harvest is great and the labors are few. I love that he brings this problem to our attention because that was then and that's still the problem or possibility now. It says, therefore, pray to the Lord of harvest that he will to send out harvesters into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. You think everybody's going to accept you as a Christian, man of God, woman of God? Not really. In in the climate that we're living in right now, you may even feel a little more inhibited than you did a year ago or two years ago, five years ago. But I want to tell you something. No one has unseated my Savior. No one has unseated God. He's still as powerful today as he was yesterday. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the one that was, it is, and is to come. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed for him over the past 24 months, over the past 48 months, over the past 60-some 60, 60 months. And so we look at that, and over the last 2,000 years, the power of the blood is still the power of the blood. The power of the cross is still the power of the cross. That empty tomb is still, in fact, that, an empty tomb. And so I'm not worshiping some dead idol, some dead God. I'm worshiping a living, living, living God. And so we stand before a living God today, armed with the word of God. And he said, go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. He's not going to send you unprepared. He's not going to send you ignorant, right? But here's what, here's the strategy. He issued the problem. Here's the problem. The harvest is great and the labors are few. And here we go. I'm still sending you out. Not only that, let's just be real. I'm sending you out as wolves, as lambs among wolves. Let's be real. It may not be easy, but how bad do you want it? It it, it may not be simple, but how bad? It may not even be convenient. It may take a little bit of your time. It may cause you to sacrifice a little something, but how bad do you want it? Because I've found that if my child wasn't in church, I'd want it bad. I found that if my grandkids weren't in church, I'd want it bad. And my neighbors were getting ready to die lost, I'd want it bad. When I received the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the salvation of Jesus Christ, my number one goal was to to win as many people as I could to the kingdom and for the kingdom of heaven. And that hasn't changed in 33 years or 31 years. That had 32 almost years. That has not changed. I believe it is our mission. I believe it is our call. I believe it's our responsibility. I believe it's our obligation. That we present the gospel of Jesus Christ by the way we live, by the way we talk, by the way we do our deeds and go about our business. But let's move on because I need to get you where I'm going or we won't get there. But whatever house you enter, listen to this. He's I'm going to send you out, sending out laborers. I'm sending you your way. And I'd love to talk about that. I love that he says, go your way. I will talk about it. He says, go your way. Go your way. You'll get this in just a second. Go your way. What way am I supposed to go, Lord? Go your way. You're going to go back to your home, aren't you? You're going to go back to your workplace tomorrow, right? You're going to still be hanging in your circle. You're still going to be at the ball game on Friday night or whatever that your, your way is. And so here's the thing. Because he gave this direction, I know that whatever way you're going, wherever you go, he's going to give you the strength, the power, the ability, the, the anointing to be a laborer. And so we grab, that, we grab that word today, go your way. Go your way. But whatever house you enter, First say, peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go house to house. Oh, see, look, we got it all wrong, didn't we? Running the neighborhood, knocking on doors. Somebody's trying that, right? I know you don't open the door for them, but there's somebody out there trying that. That's their mode, isn't it? We're just knocking on doors. We're just knocking on doors because we want to be a part of our movement. We're just knocking on doors. That's not what this says. Hmm. Well, Pastor, where do I go? I'm glad you asked. 
So here we go. We're not going house to house. Man, I love this scripture. I'm telling you, somebody needs to get fired up about this. Whatever city you enter, they will receive you. Eat such things as they set before you. Heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. He went from saying that, issuing the problem or make, presenting the problem, the harvest is great, but the labors are few, to by the end of these five portion verses of Scripture, he's, he's telling you that the harvest are, is great and the labors are you. So we just got rid of the problem. I used to work with a, a gentleman. He was actually a plant manager uh, at one time. And when he came in, he had some stuff he wanted done. He made a list. He said, I want this done. He had a big old meeting. They had this huge meeting. Everybody's talking. I want everybody's, you know what they call that, a town hall meeting. Town hall meeting. Let's get everybody's input. And so when he got there, because he was the new guy and had some new ideas and some new strategies and some new mission, then all the old guys with the old strategy, the old view and the old mission, all they started doing is giving him excuses of why that won't work. It went from being a town hall meeting to being a lecture. I like that, don't you? When God brings a new mission, I think he just needs to say, okay, no town hall meeting. Let's just lay it out in the word of God. And if you'll grab this word of God, you'll be a laborer for the kingdom of heaven. You'll see souls for your labor. And so he said to them, he listened, listened, listened. And he said, okay, guys, we're going to start this thing over. Let me tell you, this is what's going to happen. Don't tell me why we can't, don't tell me why we can't do it. Get out there and make sure we do it. Well, I don't know if I like him or not. You liked him 10 minutes ago. You liked him 10 minutes ago when he said, what do you think? Then when he didn't like what you thought, right? Aren't we like, man, we're, aren't we like that? Aren't we so petty? He wrote a zero in 4.2 seconds. If, okay, well, maybe you've never been a pastor. You can go from he wrote a zero in 4.2 seconds. Be a politician. Be a mom or dad with a 13-year-old kid. I'm just saying, that's the only thing I got amens out of. Good day. And so we look at this, and I love it. He changed everything around. He begins to make them think different. Not just that the harvest is great, but the labors are few. But now he begins to speak power. He begins to speak authority. Everything changes because now he's giving them permission. And he says, do it, but go your way and do it. Isn't that awesome? He's giving us some liberty here. He's giving us some reign here. He's saying, hey, I want you to minister and I want you to be everything God called you to be. And let me, but I want you to go your way and do it. Not do it your way. I want you to go your way and do it. And so when we look at John 14, and then I'm going to put the scripture down for a minute and just tell you what I, I believe God wants you to have. Uh, but he begins to send them out. And right here in John 14, 12, it says, very truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will even do greater things than these. Wow. How many of you can say I'm going to do greater things than Jesus? Sounds weird, doesn't it? Years ago, that might have been sacrilegious. Why? Because we were living in a different era. The only thing the majority of the people knew about God was whatever Granny and Pop Paul's opinion of it was. You know when I really got free in the Lord? I love my, I love my grandparents. Love my parents. Love all the teaching I got. That was my foundation. But when I got free in the Lord is when I got in the Word of God. And I, and I quit making statements that they made because they made them and called it Jesus. Right? And so I got free when I got in the Word of God. When I started to, to, to pick out the things of the Word of God, I said, God, break this down for me so I have an understanding. And so what happened here when he said the harvest is great, he ba basically said there's a vacancy here because the laborers are few. In that moment, and you see in the old movies and even some of the not-so-old movies, that there'll be a sign on the door to say, help wanted, somebody's strolling by, they need a job, they need a mission, they need something to do, they're out of work, and they'll take that sign down and walk in and say, hey, I saw you were needing help. So today I'm going to ask how many of you will take up the help wanted sign. Don't just take it down. Why would that person, and here's the beauty, of, why would that person take that sign down and take it to the owner? Because many other times people just walk in and say, hey, saw your sign out there. And then you have that one show up and take the sign with them to the owner. 
Why was that? They were confident. They said, they don't need this help on a sign hanging in that window. I am the help. <laughs> we don't need a vacancy sign out there. Jesus don't have to hang a help wanted sign out there. I am the laborer. He called me to be the laborer. When I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, there was something inside of me saying that that guy right there, we may have never got along. We may have had our differences. As a matter of fact, we just flat out didn't like each other, but I don't want him to die lost. I just became a laborer. I just grabbed the help on his sign, and I brought it to the altar, and I said, God, use me. Use me. And he never once said, put that sign back out there. You're not good enough. You've done too much. You've gone too far. You've sinned too much. You've got too much of a past. You've got too much baggage hanging over your shoulder. You've Put that sign back out there. So we grabbed the help wanted sign, and we roll in with an understanding that there's a vacancy, and I want to fill the vacancy. And so here's where we're at. Rubber meets the road this morning. For the next three weeks, I'm going to ask you to be the laborers like you've never been before. For the next three weeks, I'm going to ask you to minister like you've never. Here's the thing. The thing that you do consistently will be the thing that you consistently do. I lost some of you on that. Two big words in a sentence. That's, that's a push for me. But the thing that you begin to do, that you do consistently, guess what happens at the end of that? You consistently do. And so while you're the next three weeks focusing on being a laborer for the kingdom of heaven, guess what happens on week four? You're a laborer for the kingdom of heaven. And so we have an understanding. Not only have, I taught, have we taught the word, not only have you been in an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit could move, not only did you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only was there a drawing for you to come up on this hill, become uh, in, in a life changer Christian center, serve us, but here we are right now with a help wanted sign, with a vacancy sign, looking for laborers in my lands. My first day at Life Changers Christian Center, and he wanted to give me a job. That's a true story. That is a fact. I can remember a time I would invite my friends that were living like hell. I'd invite them over to the church when we were on 24th Street. I'd call and say, hey, man, I need some help moving this desk. Guess what? They came and helped me move the desk. Guess what I'd done when they left? I'd call somebody from the church and say, hey, I need some help moving this desk back. <laughs> I'd done that a few times, and the people I'd call to help me move it back, they'd say, Pastor, can I ask you a dumb question? I said, it's not a dumb question. I already know. It's not a dumb question. I wanted to get them in this building. And if they ever think about going to church anywhere, they're going to think about going to church here. Why? Because they were needed. Guess what else? They were known. How do I know? How do they know they were needed and known? Because I called them because I knew them. I had them help me move a desk because I needed them. There's not a person in this building that doesn't want to be needed and known. There's just not. We could preach theology all day long, but let's do that in a class. How about we just learn how to live in here? How about we let God teach us some practical living in here with an understanding that the, the thing that I do consistently will be the thing that I consistently do. And so starting today, I'm a new creature. Everybody just agree with that. I'm a new creature today. I just got a revelation from God today. There's a vacancy out there. There's laborers. There's laborers needed today. There's a help wanted sign hanging on the, on, on the kingdom hall. And he's saying, I need laborers. And so you grab that sign, and I'm going to help you with that sign because I think some people just so overthink things, don't you? I, I know people that my lands, they'll overthink, 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 overthink. And it's in those moments that for the 756th time they've come to talk to me about it, and they're still overthinking it, I just want to go, Psh, Psh, Psh. <laughs> do you? Okay, I apologize. <laughs> Are we just real? I mean, really. I know you feel the same way, right? But you're saying, yeah, but I'm not the pastor. <laughs> yeah. Right. So if you feel it, just think how much I feel it. And so we're over, overthinking. And so and can, let me give you this. Let me give you this. This is free. This is a nugget. Anybody want a nugget? This nugget will fit right in your pocket. You take it home, put it on your refrigerator. Right. Paralysis by analysis. Why aren't you doing anything for the Lord? Because you've overthought it all these years. Why haven't I been effective? Why haven't I taken the help on his sign down? Why haven't I done what God called me to do? Why haven't I been a laborer in the kingdom of God? Because I overthunk every single thing. And so now here I am. 
paralysis by analysis. You overthinkers out there, that's for you. You need to ask forgiveness. That's a true story. He didn't know to do it right and do it not to him and his sin. If God called you and he didn't do it, you may not have done anything, but that's the problem. And so here we are, don't overthink it. I just called somebody out on you overthinking this, right? And so now we have a whole list of sins, don't we? Can't smoke, can't cuss, can't drink, can't have sex outside of marriage, and you can't overthink. <laughs> it's the way I grew up, boy. Back in the good old days, couldn't drink, couldn't cuss, couldn't chew tobacco. That's how I knew who was saved. <laughs> I'm going to lose half of you right here. And so here we are. So now we have what? We have opportunity. How do I know we have opportunity? Because he said the harvest is great and the laborers are few. He began to lay it out for us, and now he says the harvest is great and the laborers are you. And so the labor is being you. We're going to make it pretty simple for you. God's sending you out. God's sending me out. God's sending us out. We are now the laborers. And here's the thing. You're now responsible for the words you get today. I don't know what that pastor's thinking. Uh, here's what I'm thinking. You're responsible for the words you get today. When you leave this building, it's no longer on me. It's on you. What a relief. That's better than a plot, plot, fizz, fizz. I'm just telling you. And so we grab that and we look at that. He's sending us out. We're now laborers. So now what? Who can I reach? Do you, have you been analyzing, overanalyzing yet? Who can I reach? What can I do? Where can I go? I'm going to tell you where to go. You had not heard that in church for a while, have you? When the pastor says, I'm about ready to tell you where to go. And here it is. Go your way. I'm going to tell you, just like Jesus told his disciples, go your way. And so here we find ourselves. We're going to break that scripture down. And don't forget to look back at Luke chapter 10, 1 through 9, because I'm just going to break it down for you real quick. Here's how you grow the kingdom of heaven. You find a person of peace. That means you find a friend. That's what that means. And so everybody in here has a friend. Anybody in here don't have a friend? Right. Everybody in here has a friend. And so then he says, I want you to go and eat and drink with them. He said, I, I want you to find a friend, and I want you to build a relationship. That's what that scripture says. Go find a person of peace and eat and drink with them. And so go find a friend and go build a relationship. Then he said, heal the sick. What's that mean today? Meet a need. Go find a friend, build a relationship, and meet a need. And so there's no one in here that can't say that. You've had friends, right? You've built relationships. Yeah. Have you met a need? I don't feel like I have. Did you give them a ride to the store when their car broke down? Oh, well, yeah, I did. Did you give them a little gas money that time when they was a little short on fun? Well, yeah, I did. Did you bake them a cake on their birthday? Yes, that would. Y'all still with me? Because if you overthink this, you're going to be dealing with that paralysis by analysis. Because I'm making it so simple. God's making it so simple right now. There's not a person in here that can't go outside and invite somebody to the house of God and never had to say a word. And so you look at it and say, who am I going to go to? I'm not going to go house to house, am I? No, I'm going to go to a friend. I'm going to go to a friend that I've built a relationship with. I'm going to go to a friend that I've built a relationship with that I've met a need for. And then what's it say? Share the gospel. Well, it actually says the kingdom of God has come to you now. And so that's how you begin to share the gospel. I, we don't go knocking on doors for a reason. Number one, it's not scriptural. It's great to invite them to church. If that's what you want to do. I wouldn't do it in the climate we're in right now, but... I know people used to do it. They were not effective. Why weren't they effective? Because it's not biblical. Biblical says, in Luke chapter 10, 1 through 9, says, go find a friend, build a relationship, meet a need, share the gospel. How am I going to win someone to the Lord? First, I'm going to go to a friend. But pastor, then what? I'm going to build a relationship with them. I'm going to stop by. I'm going to see some, my friend outside. We're acquaintances right now. I'm going to see him outside. I'm going to stop by and say, how's it going? Hey, pal, I see you putting a tire on. Let me help you. Let me help you put that tire on. And I'm going to meet a need. And while I'm meeting a need, I'm going to say, hey, man, listen. Next Sunday is Easter. And, you know, we've been buds a long time, haven't we? We've been buds, haven't we? I think we're buds. I, I, I mean, friends forever, but we've been buds for a long time, haven't we? And, 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 and I've met a need or two for you right over the years. I mean, we've been there for each other, right? 
And, and so I've rolled my sleeves up, and I'm just putting the tire on, and I'm just reaching for a lug nut, and I say, pal, how about this? Hey, would you go to church with me Sunday? I just, wanna, I just want you to go to church. Would you sit with me on Sunday, Easter Sunday? If you'll call me, let me know. I'll meet you at the door. Well, I'm not big on crowds, and I really don't want everybody to be it. Well, we have a balcony here. We have a balcony at Life Changers, and here's the thing. You meet me at the door, we'll go straight to the balcony, and you won't have to see anybody. You see, we overthink inviting people to church, and here's the problem. The average person, over 90% of the people, 90% of churchgoers never invite anybody to church. Let me help you with that. Let me just break it down so I don't give you a number. The average person, the average churchgoer never invites anyone to church. Who wants to be average? You want to be average? Then forget everything I said. And so the laborers are you. And so here we go. What are we going to do? What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do today? So you have five cards like this right here. Here's the thing. I can invite you to church and never mention it. Hey, I wanted to give you this, man. I hate to run. I'm on the go. I got a Walmart pickup. Three o'clock, they done sent me a text message. Wife's going to kill me if that ice cream melts. Hey, here, here, here. Here, grab this. Check this out. And you take off and get your Walmart pickup. Make your wife happy. Family's happy. Everybody eats ice cream. <laughs> but what happened in the process? That friend that you'd built a relationship for and you'd met a need with. Hey, Jeff, listen, pal, listen, I want to give you this because, hey, I, listen, I got to go. Check that out. And I'll, I'll see you Easter. I'll see you Sunday. <laughs> How intimidating was that? It wasn't. Why? Because we broke it down in Luke chapter 10, 1 through 9. We found a friend, one we'd built a relationship with, someone that we'd met a need for, and now it's your time to introduce the gospel. Well, I don't know how. You don't have to. I promise you, if you will get them to this property on Easter... Somebody will meet them out there on that hill. There will be a flag blowing on their way up that says you are loved, you are valued, you are worthy. And the next thing they're going to see is a wave and point you to another guy that's going to see a wave. Point you to another guy that's going to see a wave. They're going to come to that door. They're going to see that guest table all decked out with gifts on it. And they say, man, is this for me? And on the way, they're seeing those signs along the sidewalk. It says, welcome home. Glad you're here. Hello, friend. Did you? And what did you do? You made a friend, built a relationship, met a need, and gave them this card. And I promise when they get to that door, there's going to be some gentlemen out there that will not allow them to touch that door handle. They will open that door when they come in that hallway. There'll be someone meet them and say, hey, guys, glad you're here. Do you need anything? And if they have kids, someone will grab a VIP host will grab them and take them right down and show them where the kids go, show them where the bathrooms are, tell them about the system. If the, your kid's number pops up on the screen... Don't have to be embarrassed. It'll say number 56 and number 56, mom or daddy. Just go out there and make sure little Johnny's okay. You're going to come in here. Someone's going to hold the door open for you right there. If you can't find a seat or find the friend that invited you, they're going to go find your friend. They're going to put you in a seat. And I promise the praise team is going to sing a song, create an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to move, that they'll be drawn into salvation. We're going to bring a gospel message from the pulpit. We're going to tell them that there's a Jesus that loved them enough to die for them, a Jesus that loved them enough that because you're here today, your friend that invited you today loves you enough he said I love him I love her and more than anything I don't want to see them die lost I want to see them go to heaven and so what's our mission that is an understanding that the laborers are me laborers are you the laborers are in fact us and we have a responsibility in the kingdom of heaven I don't know how to invite somebody to church well now you do and here's the thing, there's no pressure on you now, is there? You just tell your wife, no pressure. Tell your husband, there's no pressure. Because once I give him this card, the rest of the blame falls on the pastor. Right? Right? That's where the buck stops. It don't matter how good it is, right? How bad it is. How good it is don't matter. How bad it is, it's my fault. Y'all didn't know that? Then it must have been good for y'all for a while. You forgot. But I can promise you that when you bring someone into this house, we're going to tell them about Jesus. 
we're gonna, we want them to feel loved. We want somebody to wrap their arms around them. Is this just something we do at Easter? This is something we really push at Easter. Why? Because it's one of the, the number, it actually is the number one attended church attendance day in the, in the calendar year and in the world. Why? Because whether they're saved or not, they'll come on Easter. It may be your family. They'll come on Easter. And, and, and when they come, we're going to love them. And you're going to be able to say, you know what? I used to never invite anybody to church because I was inhibited. But Life Changers makes it so easy. God makes it so easy for me to invite people to the house of God. And so here we stand. You and I, we're not only joint heirs to the kingdom of heaven. You and I are joint laborers. That you and I have made up our mind. I don't want any of my friends dying lost. I don't want any of my family dying lost. And, and it's so easy, really, right? Is it about numbers? Can I help you far as far as, I, far as my stand goes? It is about numbers. Is it about the numbers we report to the conference? No, it's not about that. It's about the fact that if we double in here today, then we have 300 people hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we double next service, we'll have about 350 plus hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's truly the only number that matters at Life Changers. One more for the kingdom of heaven. Our motto is one more. One more. Why? Because Jesus left the 99 for what? Yeah. And so what we're willing to do is put our inhibitions aside. Quit analyzing everything. What are they going to think about me? What if it's one of those days that the pastor's all fired up and takes off running? What if it is? You know what? They may run with me. You may run with me. But the fact of the matter, this season that we're living in, we have three weeks. Three weeks. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you'll do what you do, we're going to do what we do. You've got an ink pen this morning, and it's free. You've got an ink pen this morning. And there's a card with five lines on it. Sometime between now and the time you exit this door, I want you to fill those five lines out. These five names will be the five people you're going to give a card to. Well, Pastor, why would I do that? So we know who you're inviting. You know who sees these? Pastor Tammy and I and Miss Kim. You know who's going to be praying over them? Pastor Tammy and I, our leadership, and our 40 however many prayer team we have on our prayer team. We're going to pray over these every day. And if you'll do your part, we'll do our part. And if you'll do your part and we do our part, can I promise you something? God will do his part. When we begin to do the possible for the kingdom of heaven, you will begin to see God do the impossible for the glory of God. We preach signs and wonders. But if we don't see signs and wonders, we've not really preached it. We've just been talking about it. We want signs and wonders. We want your friends to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Here's the thing. Do we all want them to come here and stay here and be here? Absolutely we do. But we have seen people come through those doors, give their heart to God, and say, Pastor, listen, thank you for the message. I started over today, but there's a church that took care of me, prayed for me, believed in me, and it was where my granny went, my mom and daddy went, and I'm going to go to that church, and I'm going to be used at that church. Guess what? I'm, we're kingdom. It's about the kingdom. It is about the kingdom. When we forget it's about the kingdom and it, forget it's about the souls, then we forgot everything that matters. Amen? Amen? Put your five names on here. And before you leave, we're going to have you just drop them on the altar. They'll lay here all, all this, well, for the next couple of days. Then we'll stack them up and they'll become a part of our prayer focus. Next week, I'm going to push these again. The next week, guess what? I'm going to push these again. And on Easter, all those people you invited, they'll never know why you invited them. I don't suggest you go to them and say, listen, you're a low-down, centered, worthless piece of scum, and I want you to be saved. We came by a church the other week that said, I'm not knocking, okay? I'm just telling you what it said. So and so cowboy church, bring in the strays. Now, if I was a stray, I'd be offended at that. For me. 
But because you have a friend that you built a relationship for and you've met a need, don't let them feel any less than anybody else in your life. Tell them you love them. I want you to come and sit with me. You don't know how much I value our friendship. I want you to come with me to church. Let us do the rest. Amen. Let God work through the message. Let the Holy Spirit move in their heart. And we're going to see your friend give his heart to the Lord. Let's pray this morning. God, we're truly thankful today. We just give you glory in this house, God, and we just come to you, Lord, knowing and armed with the knowledge even that maybe not everyone here has a relationship with you. But, God, everyone here has a relationship outside of here. And so, God, we just praise you today. We praise you for every person that's here. And if there be one person that don't know you as their Savior, God, right now, they've come into this house. I pray that they've seen that we want to love people. I pray that they have seen the hand of God here. I pray that they have come into this place and though they may not have known you, all of a sudden they felt important. They felt valued in the house of God. They felt like there is a place for them because they do have friends they built a relationship with that they've met a need for. And they can be fishers of men that God is calling them right now out of the thing they're in right now, out of their darkness and into his marvelous light. So God, would you just love on them right now? God, would you just love on them and just whisper to them no condemnation in the house of God? I love you today. I'm asking you to become a part of my family, a part of my kingdom. And would you like to give your heart to the Lord today? With your head still bowed, maybe you'd be bold enough to just say, Pastor, that's me. I want to give my heart to the Lord today. Just slip up your hand and back down. Nobody sees it but me. And we're going to pray for you. Maybe hand up, back down. Thank you. Anybody else? Anyone? Because here's the thing. That's why you're here today. That's why we do what we do. We care about you. We care about your family. We want to get you involved in the kingdom of heaven. And over the next few weeks, you're going to become a fully devoted follower of Christ, doing business like we do business. Amen. We love you today. Let me just pray with you. If you raised your hand, it's simple. He said, if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. So would you just take a second? Would you give him a moment and just say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Make me new. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And could you do this for me? Just tell him right now. Just tell the devil. Devil, from this day forward, I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, I am one more for the glory of God. Amen. God bless you guys. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning, would you? Take your help on it sign with you, right? Take it straight to the King of Glory and say, I'm filling the position. Amen. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night, Facebook Live, and anything else. Don't forget your guest cards. If you came this morning and you are a guest, hadn't received a guest card yet, snag one, get a gift in these corners, or one out on the, under the drive under. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for being with us today. Don't forget to leave your prayer card, prayer list.